Hey everyone, we're at Summer Games Fest Play Days, and I'm with the man at the top, Jeff Keeley. Thank you so much for joining us and talking to us. Great to be here. Thanks for coming to Summer Game Fest. Yeah, Play Days is a hands-on experience around Summer Game Fest. We've done Summer Game Fest for, uh, this is the third year of it, but because of the pandemic, we've never been able to gather people together to actually play games. So this is really sort of traditional hands-on of getting to go on, play games, like Street Fighter for the first time. And you know, we've been watching all these trailers online, people really want to play games, and that's it's, it's what it's about. It's about bringing media and creators together to get a first look at games and do interviews and things like this too. You have a game on the show that really stood out to you? Uh, well, good question. Um, on the show, I was really excited about the Callisto Protocol that we got to show, which I'm very excited about from the kind of all the creators of Dead Space, which is great. Cuphead, I'm also partial to. It's a Canadian uh, developed game up in Toronto, of course, uh, where I grew up. And uh, yeah, it was awesome about the show, and it's also playable here, and it's coming out in a couple of weeks. So yeah, there's a lot of great games, and what I love here is that we've got big games like a Street Fighter or Sonic, and then a lot of small independent games as well. And those are the ones that I think really benefit from these events more than anyone else because they get discovered for the first time. Play Days and Summer Game Fest in general is taking up like the E3's typical slot. Mm -hmm. The ESA has said that they're planning to bring E3 back next year. I'm curious what your thoughts are on E3's significance these days. Well, I, I've been I've been to every E3 since the first one in 1995. I was a, a young kid when I, I went to E3, and uh, look, I mean, there hasn't been an E3 in I guess three years now. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's they're saying they're coming back next year. I don't really know if that's real or not. I love going to E3, but I think E3 has sort of had a participation and a relevance problem over the past couple of years. And look, we're willing to talk to them, and hopefully, it'll all be one big happy family of, of the industry. But right now, like, we just have to keep focused on what we're doing and like. We showed up this year, we did this event, I think it's great. Um, you know, it's awesome to be able to do something and bring everyone together, and that's really important to me that we do this for the industry. Like, we can't have years where like events for the industry are canceled like this, it just can't happen. So you've mentioned you guys are coming back next yeah. year, bigger and better. Do you have any plans on how you want to expand? Well, um, I can tease a little bit of what we're thinking about, and I think our view of where Summer Game Fest goes, I'm very interested in doing something that's de decentralized and sort of allows fans around the world to feel a part of the show. And I don't think we're ever going to have this one mega destination where we're going to have, you know, 200,000 people show up in a city. Could, could we do play days in multiple cities? Like, what would play days look like in London or in Tokyo? Or even how do we use, you know, digital and cloud to bring more playable games to people and things like that? I think it's going to be a digital first experience with a physical component. Looking back at some of the games, trailers, the guests you've had, is yeah. there someone that sticks out or a, a property that sticks out that you still can't believe you were able to secure? Well, I mean, last year having the first gameplay of Elden Ring was really pretty special and pretty amazing for us. The first year we did our kickoff live show and uh, getting that from From Software was pretty spectacular and that game could have shown up on any first party stage pretty much anywhere they wanted and they, went, they bet on us, which was really special. So that's the one that stands out to me. And then kind of on the other side, you've appeared in Death Stranding, uh -huh. the Muppets Halloween special. Yes. Is there a pop in the sky cameo that you would love to show up in? Oh God, no. Uh, those are always awkward for me because I sort of, I don't ask for them. Like even Death Stranding, I didn't even know it was happening. I'm like, okay, sure, like let's do it. Um, so no, I don't have a dream cameo. I would rather be behind the scenes, but I'm sure someone at some point will do things. So there was actually a game years ago. There was a game called Blood 2. And they put me in the game in a bad way, though, because they had something called the debit section. They had the credit section of the game, they had the debit section, and they, they wrote a rant about me in the actual okay. video game with the credits of it. They had to pull it off sale. It was, it was a big controversy probably 20 years ago. Right. Um, so sometimes you're in games for good reasons, but you can also be in games for bad reasons. What are your thoughts on NFTs? Boy, that's a, it's a big sort of, uh, <laughs> it's a big subject to unpack. I think the idea of digital art and digital artists being sort of compensated for their work and participating in that um, compensation over time as you know art kind of continues to move through um, its life cycle, I think is really interesting. As it relates to games, I think the other thing that we're thinking a lot about is NFTs or blockchain, things like that. It's it's a technology, but to me, it's like it's all about the gameplay and what's the game experience going to be, right? So, um, you know, I've yet to see a game or a game experience in that sort of Web3 world that has really compelled me to say, oh, that's something I would put on my show. Look, we're interested in learning about it, but right now, I think we're, we're pretty cautious about that space overall, and I think a lot of people, unfortunately, have been sort of scammed um, as part of that, which is, you know, which is, is cause for caution. We'll see. I don't know. Do you own any, an, own any NFT, NFTs? Uh, no. Uh, currently have no plans to own an NFT, but... Yeah, I, like, I, look, I, I see people, I have friends that have bought that stuff, and I, if, if you have fun with it, and, you know, go for it. Like, I'm not saying don't get in there, but I think you have to be very aware of sort of what's happening in that world, some of the challenges with it. 
Last year at the Game Awards, you spoke out against harassment and online discrimination. Yeah. It's 2022. Has things changed? Have you seen any changes around that? I don't work at these game companies, so I only right. know sort of secondhand what I hear. Um, but yeah, I think there's been movement in the right, I think it's moving in the right direction versus the wrong direction, but there's a lot of work to be done kind of cross industry related to this. So yeah, I, um, I think there has been movement, but there's a lot more movement that needs to happen. I would love your opinion on unionization in the space. Maybe yeah. even, you know, Raven Software is a big key point there. I believe in the rights of developers and um, you know our shows are all geared towards showcasing developers and actually kind of empowering developers to have their work shown to a wide audience. What I love about our show is we'll have all these independent games and that's what I mean. I think it's they're big companies but there are also so many amazing independent developers um, as part of the industry and the ecosystem and I think it's really positive that a lot of developers now can leave a big company, start their own studio, be very successful on their own, right? So I think that also plays into the kind of equation and math of sort of what's going on inside of these companies. If workers want to be a part of something like that, I think you have to sort of support the workers and kind of what they want to do. Um, but yeah, it's as you said, we saw that happen with Raven. Um, I don't know what's, I think there's even something maybe at Bioware up in Canada that was talking about something, right? Yeah, the contractors, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So again, I'm not, I don't run a gaming company, so it's hard for me to uh, to really be an expert on that sort of world. But yeah, it's, it's look, it's a potential thing that, um, could happen and, and it's a conversation to give workers more rights and I think as you said there's a sense that maybe some folks have been exploited or not sort of particularly well um, you know compensated as part of their um, you know their sort of their package or what they're doing inside of a company so yeah we're seeing a lot of consolidation especially in the last year yeah. Xbox Activision how do you look at that when you see all these companies joining up well um, I think it's TBD right on sort of if it's a good or a bad thing I think Microsoft coming in to acquire action, I think is gonna be a net positive for sort of that company and that culture. Consolidation, hard to say, like I think of it like, it's gonna make the games better, it's gonna make the game experience better. And that's hard to say. What I will say is that I think alongside all that consolidation, there's a lot of independent developers breaking off, building their own studios. Even in my show, we're having a lot of um, games from non-traditional sources um, coming out. So I don't think now it's like every game comes from EA, Activision, Ubisoft, all these big companies. And I think that's a really positive thing. So even though there is this consolidation at the very high end of these mega deals, I don't think it means that you know it's sort of monopolized in a way that like you can't make a game now or it's so hard to break through. If any, I think it's probably actually the, the best time ever in the industry for new independent teams to break through. That's great, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, last question I had for you. Yeah. As a fellow Canadian, everyone I talk to around here, no one's ever visited Canada. Really? Okay. Do you have top one, two spots that you would say to somebody, you gotta see these if you visit Canada? Oh wow, good question. Well, I love, I mean, Vancouver's a beautiful place in Canada. I love uh, going up there, like Stanley Park, places like that. Um, and even just to Vancouver Island, Nanaimo, BC, like all yep. those places are just totally beautiful. Um, and the other place where I spent a lot of time growing up is uh, cottage country um, north of Ontario, Muskoka, as they call it. Okay. Um, which is the, the lakes sort of north of Toronto and sort of Lake Russo, Lake Joseph and all those places. And yeah, my, my parents still have a place uh, up there and I enjoy uh, cottage country. It's beautiful up there and, and kind of nice. So um, that's my other sort of, that's more of a biased personal answer. But yeah, I, lo I love Muskoka as well. Cool. Hey, thank you, Jeff, so yeah. much for Thanks, talking to us. It was Thanks great. Thanks for coming to Play Days. For sure, yes. All right. We'll see and you on the next one, hopefully. Absolutely. <laughs>